if you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to justify, if you feel that you it's not straightforward, why is it not straightforward? Jesus said, I have said nothing in secret. Paul is a liar, not only you. That's the Quran. You're calling the Quran a liar. You have just called the Quran a liar. Spectacular, spectacularly wrong. He he says so. Whereas Yahweh came along and said, or Jesus Christ came and said, it's not enough to not hate people. You can come out of it if you want. But yeah, that's right. So not only did Jesus say you can't hate people in your heart because it makes you a murderer, whereas Allah through Jibril through Muhammad came along and said you can smile in their face and hate in your heart. But the Bible says if you hate in your heart, you're a murderer. Um, like in need of, do you know what I mean? Like bigger sisters. Also, um, sexual immorality is, is heavily preached against in the Bible. So anything other than one man and one woman in one marriage is uh, like, no. So it's not necessarily that homosexuals are more, uh, you know, like sinning, anybody outside of marriage. And then this same God allegedly came along 600 years later and said, nah, you're all right, have four, but you, mate, you're special. You can have 13, unless they're ugly or disabled, and then we'll send down another one to say, not these ladies. So there's that. Sexual immorality, lying, murdering. So Mohammed, I don't know if it's in the, it must be the Hadith, he said that for, uh, there was a Jewish old lady who was killed, a poetess, who he didn't like. No. I'm going to go with it. I'll stick with the Quran then. Um, so lying, sexual immorality, murder. He said there was no blood money due. Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor the religion of peace. But if they're Jews and Christians, fight until they feel them. This is nine, not only, there's a lot of them. That's 929. And then you've got uh, 9, 11 to 12, which is basically to kill apostates. You've also got, I think, 824, which is to kill apostates again. Whereas in Christianity, the very strongest treatment you're going to get for apostatizing is probably like some sort of casserole delivered to your house and like prayers and old ladies maybe tooting at you in the street. Like that's it. There's no arms and legs and crucified. And, because if there's no compulsion in religion, which is allegedly what the one true God revealed through Muhammad, God very, he doesn't change his mind. He has in the Bible altered his plans. He said, unless you find me five good men, I'm just gonna dash the whole, the whole thing, just wipe them out, Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, or he says 50, and uh, he can't find 50. And then it comes down to 25, and then he said, all right, find me five, like, let's, you know, make the effort. And then uh, he gets them out before he smites them. So he's, do you know what I mean? Like he'll tweak his plans, but he won't ever. Uh, yeah, everything about it I disagree with. I'll just stick with that. Is there anything you think I should agree with? Oh, no, no. I think everyone's entitled to their own opinions. Well, then that's not what Muhammad teaches, actually. Oh, well, it depends on how you well, interpret it, to be honest. But you're not to ask questions, so uh, interpretation. Well, then, no, Muhammad said so. Well, then that's a hadith. You have to go. But you have to go, well, it's probably Bukhari or Muslim, to be fair. But you have to go to the tafsir if you want to have any sort of range of interpretation. Is, uh, they spoke in Arabic and they spoke in metaphor. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it is. So how about the ones that say, uh, smite the unbeliever, kill them where you find them? Sorry, what's the metaphor for kill them where you find them? If we take literal translations for everything, then I think there'll be quite a few people around. Kill them where you find them. Can you give me like a just a, a out of the blue, what's your metaphorical interpretation? You could that. tell me what it is in Arabic, and I'll happily try to translate it. Of course I can. Do you want me to call it? I've got an Arabic friend. Funnily enough, I thought this may come up this week. So, I mean, if you could, if you get, sure. get the ayah and the context, I'd love to read it, and then I'd like to. You'd like to read it and then, and then hear it in Arabic. And then see what the. Would you like to read? Listen, let, let's not get carried away. It says kill them when you find I'm not them. Wait away, a second. I'm you don't want me to. Right, there's a, li a laundry list of requests coming. You either want, wait, you either, sorry, Musti, you either want to read it in Arabic and see the context. The context is fight the unbeliever. So unbeliever is pretty clear. The kafir, uh, those who are nejus, fight them until they um, either submit to Islam 
or and then we've got other verses that say kill them. So, but you'd like to hear it? Can you read Arabic? I can read. Okie dokie. All right. There's a few words that I can understand. But oh, then there's no point in me phoning if you don't like my friend. It. Well, the one who speaks Arabic, what's the point in him talking to you if you can't understand I mean, I was, him? No, I just said I was going to read. What okay, that's great. Something. I'll get it up on the phone. Well, that's, well that must be asked. Sure. No, it's, it's oh, just... Yeah, yeah, so I was wondering, basically, right, I don't, I don't really put myself in any religion, right? I'm just researching at the moment about which one's true and that. I just wanted to know, like, why why did Jesus have to come down to, like, die for everyone's sins and stuff? Okay, that's a pretty I just want to know. Can I come back to your of thing? Course, of course, I'm going to ask maybe someone to fight. Ben, would you find me the surah that says, um, fight the unbeliever, kill them where you find them? And if you could get it in Arabic as well. Yeah, no, 929 is fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day. 911 to 12. No, that's if they submit, give them a cherry cake or something. And then, yeah, all right, but this is because I'm getting on to this. Right. Kill them where you find them is the quote that I want, and the surah above uh, the ayah and the, yeah. Right, so um, I don't know how much you know about the Old Testament. So within the Old Testament, um, Moses, right, who's uh, also recognised in Islam, I'm coming back to that question though because I'm just answering this one. So Moses, you remember him? Big stone tablets, sandals. Right, so he um, was given a law by Yahweh and within this law, this law wasn't forgiveness necessarily. This was, I'm coming back to it, can you hold it? This was atonement. So God agreed that if you commit this specific sin, if you then give me a blood offering, like sacrifice a bull, ram, sheep, something, I'll cover that sin. Like I won't take it into account at judgment. And there was a raft, there were 613 different laws, ordinances and commandments. The top 10 were obviously the 10 commandments. They were like the biggies. Um, however, God already knew actually. So that the whole of the Old Testament is God's, it's a display of uh, God's patience and faithfulness towards Israel, his chosen. Because Israel was Jacob and he said, your descendants will I bless, you know, you're my chosen people. But they just were lunatics. Like literally as Moses stepped down with the new rules, they were building a cow and worshipping it. Even though they knew Moses wasn't going to the shop. He was going up the mountain to talk to the real life God. And that's how like removed from reality they were. So he knew they couldn't keep it perfectly. Especially today, it cannot be kept perfectly because the temple stuff is, is irrelevant. So God says, I will send you a perfect lamb and he will be able to perfectly atone for your sins. We call it the substitutionary atonement. So instead of me getting what I deserve, which is a lot, and the Bible teaches that everyone is deceitfully wicked, like beyond redemption almost. Because of Adam and Eve, we inherit that sinful nature. So we're more at home with sin than we are at, with perfection because we are in open rebellion against God is what the Bible says. Not Christians, but humanity. We uh, hate the truth because the truth hurts. In real, like just in nowadays, not many people want to hear the real truth if it's uncomfortable, if it makes them fit. No, seriously, no women ever really want you to say, yes, your bum looks big in that dress. It's not like, no, <laughs> duck and throw chocolate at them is my advice. Anyway, so because of the, because God's, God's law made nothing perfect, this Mosaic law didn't make anybody perfect because it just covered up the sins. Theoretically, you could go and do the same sin again next week as long as you had a big enough sheep <laughs> or, or some grain. So God himself, the triune God, Yahweh, he says, um, I will send you a perfect lamb. And through Isaiah, the prophet, he says, unto you a child will be born. So unto Israel, a child will be born. And this this was like just madness in those days. No, it, It's unbelievable that they, they did kill Isaiah. <laughs> but they, they, I'm surprised they didn't do it as he was saying it. It says, unto you a child will be born and the government will be upon his shoulders. So he's going to be a leader. And he shall be called Prince of Peace, uh, Mighty King, Eternal Father, uh, Mighty God as well. So there's a baby, that, a human baby that's going to be born to Israel and you will call him the Eternal Father. Not meaning he is the father of the Trinity, meaning that he will be called God. And then we see in the New Testament, the angel appears and he says, you will call this child Yeshua which means Yah, Yahweh saves, because he will save his people. So the angel's telling us, he, Yahweh, God, will save his people, this child. 
So the shorter answer to your question is we needed Jesus because he's perfect. No one can perfectly keep the law, however Jesus did. He was tempted in every way, which is such a blessing because he's not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters because he knows what it's like because he's got flesh. The Father, even though he's all-knowing, in an empathic way, he can't know what it is to be a human being. He can't know what it is to hate God. He can't know what it is to, to be too ashamed to want to go to a mosque or a church or anything because you just think, oh, you know, like people are going to know. Sin manifests in shame and then shame leads us into more sin because we're going to lie, we're going to pretend we give money to charity but really we don't. So Jesus came because he was the perfect lamb that echoes back to the lambs they would sacrifice in Moses' day. He could have done that but then what would... Okay, the Old the Old Testament says there, there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. That's a, that's also Islam also have adopted that, you know, like at Eid, uh, there's sacrifices about it. Yeah, yeah, I know in yeah. Turkey they do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's nice for like people who are hungry <laughs> around the town and everything, but it's not too good for the, for the sheep. So that was just the system as it was. God demanded tribute and honour because we were running around like people were sleeping with us, but men were sleeping with men and, and uh, you know, false gods were being chucked up left, right and centre as if they were going out of fashion. They were killing babies. They were like doing this horrific stuff. Sodom and Gomorrah, it wasn't just a couple of orgies, like it was satanic badness yeah. and it, it's enough for god to literally say Wait, you can you just nip in there and see if there's anyone yeah. decent because like they're gone tomorrow at this time like no so and that's got to be bad because we're told that everybody is in open rebellion which is true because if you think sorry my nose if you think of uh human nature it's much easier to lie than it is to tell the truth it's much easier to skip um five prayers a day or whatever pray it's just easier if no one's looking what does it matter? But God says, Jesus said, don't pray like these hypocrites on the corner where everyone can see you and make your face all pasty when you're fasting. So everyone thinks, oh, what a good guy. Because he said, not one of you is good. No one is good except God. And therefore, what you do, do it in secret because God already sees into your heart. What's the point in you mouthing it on a Friday saying, hey, look at me, I've got all my gear on. And then you're with a prostitute that like God knows your heart and he still loves us. That's the miracle. He knows every bad, wicked thing I ever thought and did and it don't bother him. So in, in back to your question, why can't he just forgive? He is just forgiving, but he's showing us the depths of his love for us by saying, look, I'm going to show you how it's done. I'm going to come down and be a man for 33 years and you're going to see that it is doable. Like... It is doable. However, no one else has ever done it. Even Abraham was attributed righteousness. God gave it to him. He said, because of your faith in being willing to sacrifice your boy, I'm going to give you righteousness. It's still not yours. You're not righteous. Nobody is. And that I find that easy to believe because because I know myself. <laughs> if I haven't had like coffee in the morning, or uh, I'm not even a tiny bit righteous. I'm not even trying. I'm just like, get me the coffee. And uh, yeah. It was technically, uh, Jesus, Jesus laid down his, so in the, the Bible attributes um, the Father uh, uh, from ra for raising him again, the Holy Spirit for raising him again, and also himself. He says, I lay down my life, no one takes it from me, and I have authority to raise it raise it up again. And I, he talks about the temple being destroyed and on the third day being resurrected, which is him. So, technically, the Roman it was a Roman form of punishment. But back to Isaiah, the one who got cut in half and boiled alive for his troubles, um, he said... He basically predicted the crucifixion before there were uh, crucifixions. And Jesus referred back again to Old Testament when he was dying. He said, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which is one of the Psalms. Yeah, that's a prophecy of him. So he's like going back and showing them. Look, <laughs> go and read that and you'll know what I'm talking about. But Isaiah said, they will cast lot for, lots for his clothing, which they did. They took bets, basically, on who's getting his sandals and all that. They also, he said, my bones are broken, I'm surrounded by dogs. Um, you know, like he just uh, pierced for our transgressions is also put in there. Who's ancestors? Oh, the medication time! He's, okay. he's just like stealing people's like thunder because yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one's listening yeah. to him I've got a feeling there's more than coffee in that cup <laughs>
There was another Christian over there, and he just came over, and then we just left. Yeah. Do you know, like the Jews of today? Yes. Yeah. Like, I, I think I saw a couple of Yeah, Joshua is from Yeah. yeah. How come they're still Jews? Like, God, God, yeah, sure. So, we are told in the New Testament, Christians, that for us, oh, look, yeah, I mean, for us, the old, test, uh, the old covenant is now obsolete. Doesn't mean you can now go and steal and uh, dishonor people. Yes, he fulfilled it. He said it is finished. This work is done. But we've now. It says we get a heart of flesh, and the law is written on our heart. So, but we don't do it. We can't. Still can't keep it. So we have to accept his testament, his uh, sacrifice. If we don't, if we try to keep a little bit of the law to get to God, it says Christ will avail us nothing. We're severed from him. Like it's that serious to try and work your way to God because you you can only do good works after you're saved because God does them through you. So the old, the Jews though are still under the old covenant. God hasn't rescinded it. God didn't say like, uh, all right, contract's over, you'll have to move on to a, another tariff. Like, as far as I know, if they, if they trust that they can keep enough of the law, I don't know. I mean, Jesus says there is no way um, to the Father except by me. But for those Jews who lived and died at least before he came, for everyone who lived and died before him, they're going to be under a different, a slightly different judgment because they didn't have the opportunity. Um, but Jesus did go and preach to the souls in Hades when he had his three days off just after the cross. He, he's still working, even in death. Three. On the third day he rose again, is what we, we see. On that day, like. uh, big stretch in New York, no, I'm joking. Um, so we see that um, there were some of his female followers at the tomb. They were going to come and embalm him or put some oil, you know, like yeah. nice stuff. She sees that the tomb is empty, that the, the, it's open. And then she uh, speaks to some guy who says, woman, why are you, uh, who, why do you seek among the dead the living? Like he's not dead. So that's a bit of a shocker because they've all just watched him die. Um, and then she talks to a gardener. She doesn't. She doesn't recognise anything about him. Anything he's saying. And when he says her name, she uh, the scales are removed. Is what we call it from her eyes. And she sees that it's Jesus. And he says, "Run ahead and tell my disciples." You know. So he then spends another forty days proving to them, "I'm not a ghost. Don't panic." like touch these holes in my you see that i am the guy who was up there whereas islam another thing i reject wholeheartedly the only book in the world that says it the quran says no 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 no. he didn't die it was the greatest illusion of all time from the greatest deceiver um yeah basically that allah just made someone look like jesus jesus was there and then he switched out like a like a smoke and mirror thing which means it's an insult it means that if the resurrection didn't happen christians are not safe I'm researching into all three Abrahamic I'm going to say that it's not really Abrahamic, but I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think about it, the Quran is the only piece of text to deny the resurrection. Even historians of the time will make, and, and playwrights and theatres were making fun of people, saying, ah, oh, these idiots, they 500 of them, they think they see a dead Jesus walking about. Like, and they've got no vested interest either way. Amen. And the New Testament says, um, if there is no resurrection, then Christ didn't resurrect. And if he didn't resurrect, everyone you know who's died has just perished. There's, it's all, there's nothing. It could be in... It's Galatians or the working class could be Galatians. I, I think it. Yeah. That you yeah. Think well, where that where you does Paul speak about if there is no resurrection, then Christ is not resurrected? The oh, Corinthians. It's a church around the area that he was writing to. So right, back to your thingy. Oh, he's got such a big track. Um, can I get that first? They don't Two, exist one, right You're now. You're giving it to me when I've got one hand the and I've got fog on Leo with me. All of my boy. North of England are no longer Marxists. Amen. Yeah. They don't believe in your Marxist country. They don't believe in your sound yeah, yeah, yeah. primitive. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how they don't say that. Yeah. Okay, 2 one, What is it? 2191. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Sue. So after a week. Uh, Two one ninety one. Oh, there's a lot of ayah over there. Right. Okay. So it says. Right. Quran two nine one. 
Let's see if it's got the Arabic. I don't want cookies, I want Arabic. Ah, this one looks like it is. Yeah, so it's Surah Al Baqarah and it's 191. So it's a matter issue. When you've turned a of tens of thousands of, of working class oh, girls. For God's sake, so you've By asked me to get it out. No, 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 no. Okay, so now you know it's Surah Al-Baqarah yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to no, read no, it. No, Excellent. And what and you should do, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, is read the Quran. I don't really mean it. Okay, so, by the way, Sahih, in, Sahih International. And kill them wherever you overtake them and expel them from wherever they have expelled you. And fitna is worse than killing. And do not fight them at Al-Masjid Al-Haram until they fight you there. But if they fight you, then kill them. Such is the recompense of the disbelief. And then I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with... Not 1929, 1911, which is about apostasy for people who are Muslim. Went to the to oh, now it's gone the completely and utterly Arabic. But here's a uh, yeah, no, I'm looking. That's it. Well, I wanted to catch them and not, no, no, not mob. It will, it will, it will get All right, lovely. Okay, so let's get it in. All right, no worries. I don't think they're filming at the moment. If you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to just... Okay. Just as an aside, if you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to justify, if you feel that you it's not straightforward, why is it not straightforward? Jesus said, I have said nothing in secret. Every time he says a parable, which is a metaphor, he then says, <laughs> spoiler alert, this is the meaning of the parable. Like he's not going like you lot, listen to this story and they're going to think so. It's nothing like that. And God says, let us reason together. He doesn't want, uh, he doesn't want just blind obedience. He wants a heart that is um, glorifying him and, and wants to be in communion because he loves us perfectly even while we're sinners he comes and dies yeah, I for wish us. I was more knowledgeable so I felt like a prophet of age. Do you know all Muslims yeah. say that it's fine um, because they, they, they not you personally but the Muslim debaters they all know a lot about the Bible funnily enough but they've obviously missed the big picture because they're still Muslim but they always um, as soon as you switch back to, can we talk about Islam? Like, oh, well, I'm not a scholar. And you think, but it's for mankind. It's for either for the Arabs or all mankind, depending on what source. Therefore, it's not only for scholars. Do you see what I mean? Right, so, oh, wow, this is a lot of stuff. Okay. Oh, no, I've gone on to some sort of narrative. So, Surah 9-11. Come on, why is it so difficult? Here we go. Okay, so... She was okay. Four eighty-eight to eighty-nine. Then what is the matter with you that you are divided into two parties about the hypocrites? Allah has cast them back to disbelief. So Allah misguides who he misguides. It's not even your fault because of what they have earned. Do you want to guide him whom Allah has made go astray? So are you going to try and help him? And he whom Allah has made to go astray, you will never find for him any way of guidance. So basically, don't try. They wish that you reject faith, and thus. Uh, that you all become equal as one another. So take not Uliya, protectors or friends from them, till they emigrate in the way of Allah to Muhammad. But if they turn back from Islam, i.e. apostatize, take hold of them and kill them wherever you find them. So that is actually the one that I wanted in the first place. Um, and then, sorry, so no, that's the end of the, I've got it in a... No, they've already told. But, yeah, of course it is. But hold on. Sorry, bro. No, the, the, the non sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you want to let me speak first and tell you why I just read that much? I'm making the video. No one can hear you because I've got the mic. So I'm trying... I don't care about your audience. That's obvious. Sure, you just came and interrupted, so you obviously don't care. Great. Excellent. Your God been deceived as well. My God? Your God says he is my God. What do you mean my God? Allah says he revealed the Torah and the Injil. I'm not confusing anybody. I'll show you. Would you okay, I'm going to just hold you back a second and I'm going to show you where Allah says he revealed the Bible. Okay. I have a one slide, you've got my word on that. You can watch the video afterwards and you can fact check, do a Joe Rogan on me, everything I've said. 
I have not lied. I mean, I'm only 19 years old. I'm meant to still read. I'm still learning. Ages. No, if you died tomorrow, yeah, not, not hoping it. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You think your mum's a bullshitter? That's disgusting. Uh, well, so what's that? So Orthodox Christianity is true. Is, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Only what God thinks of me. Wait, what only, what, what only what, are you? what I'm are you? a Protestant yeah. Christian. Yeah. So anyway, excuse me. Sorry. No, I'd just like to show you the proof because he's called me a liar. He's called me a liar. Don't you mean a bleese? You don't mean the devil because that's a Christian term. Well, I'm speaking English, so I'm speaking out of it. But Satan it is the fallen angel yeah, Lucifer. Iblis is a jinn. Iblis is a jinn. Anyway, okay. The Torah, right. Okay, so Surah 544. We revealed the Torah, which is a guidance and a light. Quran 544, and this was actually revealed for the Jews. So he just called me a liar on that, and there's your evidence that I'm not lying. Okay? The ball is a liar, not only you. That's the Quran. You're calling the Quran a liar. You have just called the Quran a liar. So I agree with you. Well done. Okay, excellent. Brilliant. They made you Christian, man. They slaved you and they made you Christian, Latin American. Who's they? Who's they? You used to be a Latin Anyway, do you have any other questions? Because people get very triggered. You know, like I said, the truth hurts. This is an example. Oh, thank you. Probably a big piece of my brain. Okay, so any other questions? Maybe musty, my Bob. Me All right. Do you have any other questions? I'm saying, do you have any other questions? Not while the screech. Don't leave. Don't leave. We'll uh, we'll help you. Okay, so I'm going to do a wrap up. So, so as I said to this uh, to this guy, this lovely guy actually earlier, the truth hurts. People, you know, like I've said it often, but um, if you, you know, like think of politics. If um, a lunatic, like monster raving loony party comes along, nobody really rejects it too heavily. Um, but when the truth comes along, people rail against it. Christianity is hated. You see this from this guy who claims that his mother is a Christian and that Christian is, Christians are bullshitting everybody. But the fact is that Takia is an Islamic tenet. It might be claimed that it's Shia, but no, no, no. You can smile in their face, hate with your heart. And the Bible says that if you hate in your heart, you're a murderer. And we know who is the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning. And spoiler alert, <laughs> he changed his name in the seventh century. So, um, yeah, if you don't have the blood of Christ, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you're going to burn. Like, what's the point? Just just check it out. Just have an inquiring mind like these two gentlemen. Nobody's, nobody is trying to subjugate you. Nobody is trying to BS you into it. I'm saying ask as many questions as you like because Mohammed said do not ask questions and politicians and liars are the ones who say don't ask me, mate. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, come to Jesus. We have a right laugh. See ya.